Well, hello there. It's Brita Miller. Um, I'm so happy to see you again. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Uh, so this is my um, pre-Halloween October Take a Break with Brita. Um, it's hard to believe that we're now full into fall. Colors are changing. The air is brisk and crisp. I'm wearing many of the same sweaters that I wore, you know, back in, uh, in the springtime when I started doing these uh, live videos. But I just wanted to check in with you today and share a couple of hints, tips, some good ideas, and um, a thought about uh, just a, an overriding thing that's kind of hanging around a lot of people that I've been speaking with lately. So, first of all, last night I watched uh, the season premiere of This Is Us, and I do love that show. You know, and it was two hours and I stayed awake for the whole thing. So that's a win right there. Um, but there was um, and no spoilers. Don't worry. I'm not going to give away anything. Uh, but there was a, a, a point in the program where um, <clears throat> the mom is, uh, you know, his early uh, onset uh, or Alzheimer's disease. And it's very slow and gradual. And she had an episode <clears throat> and it reminded me of something that a physician, a gerontologist, shared with me a couple of years ago, something that I had never known. Now, first of all, this is the disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. This is just a little uh, alert that if you are caring for an elderly person with or without Alzheimer's disease or dementia, there is one over-the-counter drug that my, my gerontologist friend just said to me, oh, don't ever give that to an elderly person. They should never take this drug. And I had never heard of this. So <clears throat> the drug is um, something, any, I don't know if it's any allergy medicine. She mentioned Benadryl specifically. Um, so this is a time to ask this question of, uh, of your physician or your loved one's physician. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Apparently, there is an ingredient in many, um, I, I don't know if it's an antihistamine or what it is, but in, in Benadryl or other allergy uh, <clears throat> types of medicines that impacts the brain, that impacts memory in a very serious, big way, particularly with people with Alzheimer's disease. So I, I, I remember this and I thought, yeah. So just a word to the wise, be mindful of any over-the-counter medication that may interact with current medications that, that someone is caring for, that you're caring for yourself in your family. Um, just don't presume just because it's over the counter that it's completely safe. So even if you're not taking other medicine, apparently um, <clears throat> this can have a negative impact and just really good, good to know. Okay, number one. Number two. So everyone in our household, um, thank God, has been healthy this last year or is it 10 years that we've had COVID? Feels like it. Anyway, <laughs> long time that we've been dealing with this and we've been mindful of masking and washing hands and not seeing other people. And, um, you know, it's just really a shame because my house has never looked better and no one can come over. You know, I hate that. Anyway, um, <laughs> if... Uh, <clears throat> It, it, the, the, this whole idea of being smart and staying safe, it's not going away. We're still in the thick of it. And uh, anyway, a few weeks ago, Jim wasn't feeling well. He thought he had a fever. He wasn't sure. So I go to uh, the medicine cabinet looking for the thermometer, which we have not used 10 years maybe. And I found what I thought was, you know, I was grateful it wasn't one of those glass mercury thermometers because we used to have those. But I found this little jobby and it's, it's a, you know, just an inexpensive electronic thermometer. But I had no idea how old it was. And honestly, I'm, it's easy 10 years old. And that means the batteries are easy 10 years old. And I had no idea whether I could trust it, whether it even worked. And when you're dealing with someone who's not feeling well and you really want to know whether they have a fever or is it the fact that they're under, you know, 10 blankets and sweating a little bit, maybe that's the reason. <laughs> anyway, um, that's when I knew I, I needed to, to resolve this situation. When COVID first came about and we were mindful of it, um, I thought I should get one of those fancy thermometers 
you know, that, that every business seems to have or, or a doctor's office or places that you go where they, they uh, just scan your forehead and they can tell what your temperature is. Um, as uh, my father, you know, would say he hated invasive procedures. He viewed taking your temperature as an invasive procedure, by the way. Anyway, so I started looking for them and then I kind of forgot about it. And um, I checked uh, at Costco because, you know, that's usually a, a, a good place to buy things at a good price. Sold out, sold out, sold out. I, I wasn't really worried about it or obsessed about it. But anyway, the other day I was getting a prescription refill at the pharmacy and right next to the window, they had a little display of these babies. And um, this is the kind of thermometer that is used by <clears throat> places that just scan your forehead. So I bought it. It was $23, not super cheap, but not crazy expensive. And I view it as kind of an insurance policy and I intentionally have not opened it yet because I'm really hoping I will never have to use it, that I will never have to open it. Um, I'm not going to return it, but it's, it's just knowing that this is in the closet that if uh, somebody were to say, hey, I'm not feeling very good, do you think I have a fever? I had a boss one time years ago that was a total hypochondriac, and that was the question he would come to the staff often and say, do you think I have a fever? And it became a joke. You know, we would see him and think, yeah, I think he's got a fever. <laughs> anyway, COVID is no joke. And if you think you have a fever, it's good to know. Um, I was listening to a... Uh, uh, a video a podcast uh, today from the University of Michigan Health System and a couple of the bits of advice that they gave that I'd like to share with you and I did post a link to this conversation on uh, on my Facebook page it, it was really good it was an ER doc it was a nurse it was a social worker people who really know what they're talking about and they said that first and foremost people ask well should I go to the hospital should I go to the uh, ER and the basic thing is, if you're having a hard time breathing, if you can't breathe, like if you're catching your breath, go to the hospital. But, one, not but, and uh, the ER doc gave, I thought, a really good bit of advice. He said, call your doctor in advance to let them know that you're going to head there. That could impact your insurance, could pave the way, could make your, your uh, appearance at the ER a little bit smoother, a little bit easier. But also, um, if you have information, if you have a, a, a reliable thermometer, not a 10-year-old one with maybe a dead battery, um, but if you have a reliable thermometer and you could say what your temperature is, then when you get there, they can compare it, which is a good thing. And the other thing he talked about was, <clears throat> and I don't know the name of it, oxy something. It's, it's that little thing they put on your finger to measure the oxygen levels in your blood. If you're caring for someone who's pretty fragile or frail or has uh, some pre-existing conditions that makes you more concerned about them, you might want to get one of those. Uh, it's not invasive and it helps you. This um, pulsometer, I think it, I'm sorry, I don't know the, the formal name of it, but it's a helpful thing to have. And uh, again, to be prepared and forearmed can eliminate a lot of stress, eliminate a lot of worry and guesswork and uh, just kind of help you take care of other people and at the same time take some of this pressure and burden of making all these decisions off of you. So that was those are the tips and helpful hints from Brita today that I wanted to share with you. Um, but the other thing I want to, the, the, the other big bad word that I'm hearing an awful lot lately is guilt. Guilt. People are just feeling guilty and about lots of things that they have no business feeling guilty about, okay? Now, let me tell you this. If you have done something wrong, if you have hurt someone, um, guilt is a good thing. It's, it's a legitimate emotion to feel. And then the next step is to make reparations, to apologize, to fix the thing, to make amends with what you've done. Now, I'm not talking about that kind of guilt. I'm talking about the guilt that you might feel when... Uh, you're doing well or you're doing something to take care of yourself and it sucks the joy right out of it you're, you're spending so much time feeling guilty about sitting down to read a book or laying down to take a 20-minute nap or feeling guilty about getting a massage or um, going for a walk by yourself with no one else not thinking about anyone else 
um, and, and you're feeling, oh, you know, I, I shouldn't be doing this. I, I should be doing blah, 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 blah. Let go. Get rid of it. It is not healthy and it isn't doing the people that you care for any favors. Because if you're a wreck, if you aren't taking good care of yourself, how do you think you're going to be able to take care of anyone else? and be mindful to make good decisions and um, to not um, to not be your best self. So, so if you feel that guilt monster is just sitting on your shoulder and saying bad things in your ears, you know, go away, go away. I have no time for you. I have no time for you. I'm doing what I need to do so I can be my very best. So those are my thoughts for you today on this Wednesday morning before Halloween. Wow, it's almost Halloween, end of October. I, I love the meme that I said, you know, I've been um, wearing masks and eating candy for the last seven months. I, you know, I don't really need Halloween a day to do that. I'm already there. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm thinking about you. I hope that you're well. Um, I've missed you. And if you'd like to see more of these 10 to 10s, Take a break with Brita, put it in the comment, and I'll see if I can uh, get back at it. I've been doing lots and lots of other things to, to help caregivers carry on and just to help people in general to make the best of this really, really challenging time. If you want to see more videos, just head over to my YouTube channel, BritaTV.com. Pretty easy. And uh, there's some videos there that are kind of fun. So I wish you well. Be well. Take care of yourself so that you are able to care for others. I'll see you soon.